Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Kicking in the Second Half, Kish YZ. We are on to the Western Conference Finals. This is a battle between the number four seed Los Angeles Clippers versus the number two seed, the Phoenix Suns. And this is about to get gritty. If it wasn't already gritty in the previous series between whatever opponent these teams were playing, it's about to get real gritty now. And we're going to get into this. We're going to go over what I think is going to happen or what I think should happen in this series. Uh, let's start off with just the big factor here that um, PG-13, a.k.a. Paul George, he's never played in a finals game. Uh, neither has Chris Paul, a.k.a. CP3, for the Phoenix Suns and basically the rest of the Phoenix Suns outside of maybe Jay Crowder there. But just in general, the two headline players here, uh, as far as um, – the, the vets, obviously, Kawhi has played. And then if we're looking at um, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton for the Phoenix Suns, neither one of them have played in the finals. So, But like I said, Paul George has tried to get there, and Chris Paul has tried to get there. But obviously, only one's going to make it this year to the finals. And let's get into what what's going to happen here. Um, that was just a brief summary, but I want to start off with the Clippers, PG-13. Um, I'm going to be looking for who's going to be his running mate for this series. Last series we saw uh, Kawhi go down. It looks like he probably won't be playing in this series. And Reggie Jackson stepped up. I I liked what I saw there with Reggie Jackson. I'm hoping that he actually gets the opportunity to um, step up. I mean, I'm sure he's going to get the opportunity, but as far as like seizing the day, seizing the moment with that opportunity and making himself very well known in this series. Uh, the last series against the Utah Jazz, I think he had fouled out what was a game one, I believe. So after that, you know, he changed his mindset and kind of went into a whole different type of player as far as staying out of foul trouble or not fouling out of the game and just was in attack mode. So I definitely feel like he's going to have the confidence to kind of, um, you know, repeat that role here with this series. But, you know, this is a totally different team than the Jazz team. But I would like to see also Terrence Mann, who had a breakout series last series, Due to Kawhi Leonard being injured, you know, he got a start, a couple starts there. And, you know, he took advantage of it in the last game, in the game six against the Utah Jazz. And he was one of those players that the Jazz couldn't account for because there's probably not much to scout. So going into this series against Phoenix, I'm sure Phoenix has studied him just a little bit in between this time off uh, between the Utah Jazz game that was played the other night to the beginning of this series. So, We'll see if Terrence Mann can replicate some of that production. I mean, he had a career slash season high. Uh, I'm sorry, slash um, playoff high as well last game. So I'm not sure if he can keep that level up. But, you know, if he's contributing 20 points a game, that's awesome there. That that would help tremendously. But, I mean, I really feel like Reggie Jackson would be more so the go-to guy. But, you know, two guys to watch out for here to see if they can continue what, where they left off last series. But, Getting to the X factors for this, I think the X factor, once again, could possibly be uh, Patrick Beverly or the Morris brother. I think it's Mark Keefe over there, but he's kind of hit or miss. I, I want to see, I want to see Patrick Beverly, which is kind of hit or miss as far as playing time. But when they run the small ball, which is how they took care of the Utah Jazz, if they're going to run small ball here because of DeAndre Ayton, then. I want to see that Patrick Beverly matchup on the floor where he's going after Chris Paul on the floor. And those guys are definitely going to get into it, which brings me back to what I was saying earlier about it being a gritty series. Cause I think he's just going to get all up in his face. And I don't know, I don't think there's going to be fist swinging, but there's going to be a lot of uh, close contact almost looks like they're going to be on the kiss cam as far as probably being within three to six inches of each other's mouths there. I'm sure they're going to be barking back and forth at each other. So, um, you know, Patrick Beverly is going to try to get Chris Paul or whoever out of the game mentally and possibly physically if they get technicals. But um, Chris Paul's, you know, he'll draw back, but he, he'll most likely keep a level hit. But it's going to be something to watch out for. And like I said, uh, Morris, you know, he, he should hopefully help to contribute in the scoring. We'll see if he does. And then that brings me back to the bigs. Zubak might not get any playing time here again, or they might run where he doesn't come out at all in the first game. And then if they need to make an adjustment from there on, depending on how that game goes, then, you know, Tyloo will probably throw him in there at some point. 
or later on in the series. But, you know, I'm assuming they're going to start out with the small ball here and just kind of continue where they left off from the Utah Jazz, seeing that, you know, the Utah Jazz was strong favorites to to make it into the uh, finals here. And, you know, this the Phoenix Suns is no joke either. They were a team that actually took over the number one spot briefly during the regular season. So they're right there with the Utah Jazz as far as how great they, this team was all season long. So oh, shout out to the Tavern Geek. If you uh, want to check him out, he has a YouTube page. He does podcasting over there as well. But he's a big Phoenix Suns fan. So what up, Micah? Hey, good luck, bro, with this series here. I know you're super excited where the uh, Phoenix Suns have been in the past to where they're at now. And obviously you're hoping that they get to continue this past this series but let's move on from this to uh i guess to the phoenix sun so the phoenix suns here uh first thing i have here cp3 his health that's something just to monitor because of the years past and the lakers series the first round where he had that shoulder problem uh that was kind of like a minor injury kept him off the court for a little bit but really didn't miss any games there and then the last series he looked fine so hopefully he stays the same here. I don't think the shoulder might be something that would happen, but just injuries in general, hopefully there's no hamstring or anything that would keep him out any games. Cause we saw this with him playing for the Houston Rockets alongside James Harden a few years back when they made it to the Western conference finals. And they were actually up against golden state. I think they were up three, one and, you know, Chris Paul went down. They ultimately lost that series there. And then, um, you know, I hate to see anything like this. So I'm, I'm rooting for Chris Paul cause I want to see him make it to the finals. I want to see him win a championship, to be honest. So, um, but the health is, is definitely something to just to keep an eye out for because it could happen at any moment with them, but I hope not, you know, injuries do happen in the league and that's something that is very unpredictable, but I still feel like he's somewhat of an X factor here just because like I said, that contract of what he's wanting to get in the off season where he's planning on declining the player option and looking for a three year around $100 million deal, uh, for a new contract and that would probably be his last contract in the league or his last big contract. Uh, it had looked before like the current contract he was on would be his last big contract, but the way he's been playing and contributing, he's definitely bringing a winning attitude uh, that veteran leadership that you need. He could get teams to, you know, the playoffs, get teams and in deep into the playoffs to the Western conference finals. At least we've seen a couple of times and we'll see if, um, he can get them to the finals and ultimately get them the chip. But yeah, just one series at a time. So I want to see him still perform at that level of being a leadership, being a floor general, which comes easy to him anyway. But I also want to mention Mikel Bridges. Uh, I'm interested in seeing him guard Paul George because somebody's got to take care of Paul George. He's the primary option. And the way he's been playing after the last series, he's making plays for his teammates. So you have to guard him for the pass, guard him for the shot, guard him for the drive. Uh, very versatile guy there. He's six nine, so he should be attacking a lot more. Which I should have mentioned when I talked about the Clippers. He's got to he's got to attack. But if he stays focused and keeps doing what he did in the last series, then you know we're going to see a new version of playoff P. The post pandemic P is what uh, maybe what I consider that to be as far as his performance level so far in these playoffs. But let's see if Bridges can uh, kind of hold him back, kind of retain him back a little bit on his scoring. But it's going to be hard to stop if he's locked in. So uh, that's another thing to keep out there for. But who is guarding Booker is the question I actually have for the Clippers because the Clippers are going against uh, a heavy shooting team. I mean, you got Jay Crowder out there who can knock down threes at a high clip as far as, you know, he might take eight threes, six threes a game and make – about half of them so that's somebody to watch out for and he's an energizer on defense so he can turn you know easily turn the defense into offense for uh fast breaks but Devin Booker he's just a sniper he's just when he gets locked in he has that Kobe mentality he's just going to be hard to stop so I'm not sure Paul George might be the best player obviously to, to guard him at times but if Paul George is carrying a lot on the offensive end we may look to somebody like, well, it's going to be tough if Patrick Beverly is guarding Chris Paul as well, but maybe Reggie Jackson, but Reggie Jackson is going to be undersized. Morris might be too physical where he's going to draw fouls or technical fouls or flagrant fouls. So I'm not sure about that either. Maybe they're going to stick Terrence Mann on Devin Booker, which would be interesting because um, that's going to be a learning curve for Terrence Mann there. But I mean, if he's up for the challenge, go for it. But 
Booker here should be able to almost score at will, in my opinion. You know, if he's hitting shots, then he's going to continue to shoot. If he's not hitting shots, he still needs to continue to shoot to get through it. But I don't see at the moment anybody really locking him up outside of Paul George uh, right now. And like I said, he might not be able to do it all game just because of how much he's going to have to contribute and carry on the offensive end. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I guess I mentioned Chris Paul as the X factor. So that that was also kind of like an X factor thing there, I guess, looking at um, looking at Booker. But if we're wanting to get deeper down into the roster, I guess maybe somebody like Cameron Payne once more, maybe he might have a decent series. You know, if you're talking about a player like uh, Terrence Mann getting some playing time, maybe Cameron Payne gets a little bit more playing time in this series and he matches up against him uh on the bench i guess it just depends if, if they need to uh they need to replace Aiton in there and they could go small ball against the clipper small ball then then yeah i guess i see cameron Payne running a little bit more uh sarge might get some more playing time here if he could uh you know continue to stretch out the floor like he does at, at occasions but um but yeah i mean Aiton here maybe he's the ultimate x factor because he has to basically watch some film on the last series and see where Rudy Gobert went wrong as far as the team uh, not getting him involved with some of the touches down the stretch or when they played small ball, uh, the Clippers played small ball against them. And, you know, he's definitely going to have to look out on who to guard on the perimeter if the Clippers are hitting, especially if the Clippers for somehow take one game on the road uh, within the first two games because they're both playing in Phoenix for the first two games. And then when they go to the uh, home in Los Angeles, they get a lot of momentum there. They don't mind firing at threes. And I think the statistic was that the Clippers were like the best three point shooting team in the league this season. Like percentage wise, I might have mentioned that before, like in the first round for the Clippers matchup against Dallas. But I mean, you know, it's it's a stat for a reason. And you have to, you know, you have to obey by that. But sometimes you live by the three, you die by the three. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. But. You know, the small ball is where it's at for the Clippers and the Suns. They have to keep relying on Chris Paul to, uh, to you know, kind of kind of help the team and, and guiding them to what they need to do on the court as far as reading plays and making plays. But also look for Rondo. I should have mentioned Rajon Rondo for the Clippers as well because, you know, Rondo and Chris Paul, they'll draw each other too. So it's going to be definitely gritty. Uh, it's it's going to be gritty. It's, it's just going to be – so much talking going on on the sidelines, a lot of chirping, what Chris uh, Chris Paul, CP3 likes to say. Not CP3, good grief. Man, it's like 5 o'clock over here, and I'm trying to do this because I just realized that this game is coming up Monday, uh, Sunday, and I thought it was only one game Sunday, which was the, the Hawks 76ers series finishing up. But, you know, then this was thrown in my lap when I looked. I was like, ah, I got to get this out of here. But, no, uh, Paul George, whatever I was saying about CP3, I meant Paul George. So anyway, but um, yeah, so that's just that's just some things that's going to go on here. And I think it's going to be a very, very intriguing series here. Um, you know, Monte Morris is a great coach and he's going to try to develop plans with Chris Paul to uh, make adjustments when needed. But Ty Lu is a great coach as well. We know he's been in the position of playing for a championship caliber coach and Phil Jackson and coaching the championship. Cavaliers team back in 2016 so you know it's going to be a battle on both ends but uh, I guess it's getting down to the prediction time so if I'm looking at this series like I, I want to kind of on the low key I kind of want to root for Paul George just because Kawhi Leonard's out I'm not going to lie no joke uh, I kind of like what Paul George is doing now um, I still like him a little bit because of him playing for OKC so he didn't leave uh, on terms like what Kevin Durant did so I'm not really salty about about Paul George in that fashion, but, um, but yeah, without him being Kawhi, he's definitely like a big underdog now. So I kind of, I'm kind of um, wanting to see him pull off a couple wins here, but ultimately I do want to see Chris Paul advance as well. So I'm going to give Phoenix the night here because I think they have the better overall team, but I, I didn't even think that the Clippers would make it this far. So um, I, I don't want to count them out, but right now I'm saying Phoenix and six is what I got. And that might sound high. Cause I'm, you know, that one guy out there got tickets. He was like Phoenix and four, but I'm not that type of Phoenix guy. I'm not the Phoenix fan. So, um, you know, I'm being a little bit more 
uh, I guess, pessimistic if you're looking at it from a Phoenix point of view and optimistic if you're looking from a Clippers point of view. But, I mean, I can ultimately see the Phoenix Suns going in five. I just put six because I could see maybe uh, Paul George and the Clippers winning two games at home at some point during the series. So, um, just because of the way they played in the last series that – uh, that that could be a factor if once you throw in health on the other side, if, if Chris Paul's not 100% with that shoulder still or, or something to that extent. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I just want to say right now is what I got is Phoenix and six. So either way, I, I got Phoenix coming out of coming out of the West. If, if the Clippers come out in this series, uh, I don't even know what to think anymore. It's just some more questions you're going to have to ask me. <laughs> But anyway, let's get out of here. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure you catch some of our uh, shoes videos or my shoes videos. I'm dropping uh, some new content. I'm behind on content when it comes to the shoes. I got some ordered that's on the way, some already here. And I'm trying to make these videos, one, because I do like the shoes and I've already done some shoes videos in the past, but two, because it is coming up for back to school, we'll be here before you know it. So I'm actually trying to do some shoes videos where I find shoes that I like and I think they're stylish and how to wear them, that costs roughly around $100 or less because some of these are definitely less than $100. So, you know, stay tuned for those. And obviously, you know, once again, if you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, please consider sharing the video. And also, if you want to catch our audio-only versions of our podcast and these playoff videos that I'm doing, you can check us out on like Spotify, Anchor.fm, Breakers, uh, just to name a few because I can't remember them all offhand, but just search for us under Kish YZ, K-I-S-H space YZ, just like on here on YouTube. And if you'd like to, you can message us or follow us on Twitter and Instagram under Kish YZ, that's K-I-S-H underscore YZ. Once again, everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, Thank you for kicking in the second half, everybody. Peace and love.